Hello! While I was working on my next video, somebody brought this YouTube video to my attention, made by Life Well Lived. It looks like this video is going to talk about all of the health hazards posed by microwaves, and that's cool because I've done a lot of work with microwaves myself before, so I'm really interested to see what this video has to say. So, let's video this a watch. Oh, wait. I don't think that last sentence made any sense. You have betrayed me, life well lived, and for that you shall pay the ultimate price. I'm going to review you. Yeah, so apparently I'm like a review channel now. I don't normally like to call out other people on their videos because I don't want to undermine the hard work that video making involves, but this video is the exception. It lazily uses stills stolen from Google Images and a text-to-speech robot to read the script. It really amazes me how little effort it takes to get a million views these days. But I am not here to critique their video making. I am here to debunk their argument, which is oh so flawed, and also offer you some correct advice at the same time. So. This is my review of these diseases are all caused by microwave ovens and you've probably ignored them life well lived. <sighs> the link is in the description, please don't click it. These diseases are all caused by microwave ovens and you've probably ignored them. <laughs> Alright, so how long is it gonna be before robots are writing and reading our videos? Not long it seems. How microwaves work. LIES! Oh, wait. Too early. Alternating currents force atoms to reverse their polarity. This creates friction and vibrates the water inside of the food molecules causing the food to heat up. Okay, a little shaky with the terminology, but nothing that he said is a flat-out lie. The experts say that inside of your microwave there- Ah. Ah. Moments like this make it really easy for me to hate this video, saying experts say is meaningless in this sentence. You don't need experts to tell you what the frequency inside a microwave is. In fact, if you had any experts, they probably would have reported the correct number, which is actually 2.45 gigahertz. At least bother to do a simple Google search. Also, if you're so scared of that particular frequency, were you aware that Wi-Fi also operates at 2.4 gigahertz? I sure hope you're not watching this video over the internet. So do you actually know why microwaves operate at 2.4 gigahertz? Well, let's pull out the Board of Education. In order for us to understand why a microwave operates at the frequency it does, we first need to understand water molecules. The side with the hydrogens takes on an overall positive charge, and the side with the valence electrons takes on an overall negative charge, which means that water acts as a dipole, with an electric potential across it. So when waves are introduced into a water molecule from the microwave, it'll cause the water molecule to physically flip its orientation, and this movement creates friction with nearby molecules and heats it up. But why does this wave have to be 2.45 gigahertz? We keep it low so that we can maximize a thing called penetration depth. Penetration depth is a measure of how far a wave can propagate into a material, such as water being a very low conductivity, just on its own. With all of this information in hand, we can calculate the penetration depth to be about 4.5 centimeters. That calculation only applies for the most crystal clear of distilled water. For something a little more practical to find inside of a microwave, this is the solution that I found for a steak. The penetration depth being about 1.7 centimeters. So what the equations didn't make immediately obvious is that the penetration depth is proportional to 1 over the frequency, which means if we want to go for a higher frequency inside of a microwave oven, we would get less penetration, which isn't good if we want to heat something all the way through. <sighs> I'm looking at you, Hot Pockets. So it turns out that 2.4 gigahertz is a nice compromise between having good penetration depth into our food and also still being a high enough frequency to resonate well with water. 
I seem to have gotten a little bit carried away. Let's get back to the review. And the worst thing is that the frequency amount shown to harm the human body is 10 hertz. Lies! 10 hertz? 10 hertz? 10 hertz! What? what the, who told you that? That's not true. That, 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 that's, that's not even... That's so wrong. That, that's so wrong. It's not even... Ah, this is going to be a long video for me to make. I sure hope you guys appreciate that I go through this for you. 10 hertz is such a low frequency that it's actually in the audible range. Well, on the lower side of the audible range. It's really hard to hear. In fact, we are exposed to these low frequency electromagnetic waves, like it or not, every day. So I have this extension cord plugged into the wall outlet, so this is acting like an antenna, and the electric field is emanating from this at around 60 hertz. Now what I have here is a device called an inductive amplifier. What this lovely piece of technology does is it listens for ambient electric fields and converts them into an audible sound. Maybe you can hear that there's very little ambience at the moment, but when I bring it near the antenna... It gets a lot louder, and you can also hear that just a little distance away, it's pretty much gone down to zero. And some people argue that this radiation can be harmful to your health. So, should we be worried about electromagnetic wave exposure? Yes, we should. And here's why. Radio and microwave frequencies can be dangerous, but only if the power is high enough. For instance, workers on radar systems will occasionally get mild to severe burns due to being in close proximity to such a high-powered source. This includes something like a microwave. However, microwave doors protect you and don't allow a lot of leakage, so there's not much to worry about. Note you should be very careful and know that even if your microwave oven is perfectly sealed, you are still exposed to harmful levels of electromagnetic fields. So let's do some measurements using our trusty inductive amplifier again. Here's what the microwave sounds like with nothing happening, and now let's turn it on and hear if there's a difference. The reason that there is not an insane power density just outside the microwave is because of the microwave door. Even though it has holes in it, and may have some leakage around it, the fact of the matter is that the wavelength of the 2.4 GHz inside of a microwave is about 12 centimeters. so in simplest terms, the wave simply cannot fit through all of these holes. However, take something like a light wave, whose frequency is... I don't know, 400 nanometers? It can go through these holes, which means that you can see what you're cooking inside the microwave. However, it's not to say that none of this wave doesn't get out of the microwave. It does, and it can be described like this. If this is the power inside the cavity, and this dashed line here represents the microwave door, it'll quickly drop off exponentially. So, if you're worried about these waves being dangerous anyway, the solution is simple. Just stand more than a couple of feet away from your microwave, and the power density will be effectively zero. The Board of Education, everybody. So, what does this video have to say about all of the problems that these waves supposedly cause anyway? EMF can penetrate human bodies which is why they are used for x-ray machines but can causing serious health problems. Okay, only two minutes into the video and we finally get to see what these alleged diseases are. So here's what I'm gonna do. I've already researched all the things that he's about to say, so as he goes through them, I'm just gonna give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down to indicate whether it's true or false. Here we go. How does a microwave oven harm our bodies? It causes birth defects. It causes cancer. Cataracts due to our eyes lack of blood vessels to dissipate the cellular stress and heat from the microwave. It will weaken your immune system. It can cause more serious and severe illnesses. 
Many experts around the world say that microwaving food degrades and depletes food of its nutrients. The video goes on to claim that microwave radiation somehow changes the chemistry in our food. And this is unfortunately correct. Microwave radiation, as we discussed, causes water molecules to start vibrating, and as they hit nearby molecules, they heat them up. While occasionally a water molecule can hit another molecule and cause it to bend. This is called isomeric distortion, and this will change the chemical properties of whatever molecule it hit. The centers often cite a paper out of Spain from the early 90s that takes a look at nutrients loss in vegetables. In fact, I'm pretty sure that Life Well Live used that exact same paper to support some of their evidence. The research I was able to find suggests that microwaves are largely linked to destroying a lot of nutrients, such as antioxidants for one. Microwaves do tend to destroy more of these nutrients than other conventional methods of heating. One piece of anecdotal evidence comes from 1880... I'm sorry, comes from 1989 from a hospital in Oklahoma where a nurse used a microwave to heat up blood before a transfusion. The patient sadly passed away because the blood had chemical changes undergone while it was in the microwave. But is this one piece of anecdotal evidence damning enough to say that we should get rid of all of our microwaves? Thankfully, research is still being done in this field so that we can figure out exactly how microwaves are affecting the chemistry of our food. Is it significant or insignificant, dangerous, toxic? Prepare yourself for truly the most cancerous thing out there, my opinion. Although microwaves can definitely do a lot of weird chemical changes to our food, do I think that that's necessarily a bad thing? No. And this is just based on the evidence that I've seen, and I certainly have not seen all the evidence that there is. But given how long microwaves have been around, and the fact that there have never been any concrete examples of microwaves causing dangerous chemical changes in our food, it seems likely to me that any changes that are happening are mostly insignificant and not immediately dangerous to us. The radiation from the microwave destroys and deforms the molecules in the food creating dangerous radioactive compounds. Radioactive compounds. Thank god that's over. Wait, what? What's this? There are three of them? Oh, no, 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 no. I refuse! I'm not doing that again. Okay, so this is undoubtedly a contender for the worst educational YouTube video out there. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand that new technologies can be dangerous. I mean, just look at a research paper for anything invented in the last decade. But, on one hand, and on the other, before we go bashing technology, let's remember that thanks to technology, our lifespans have been steadily increasing, and they're probably going to keep increasing as time goes on. I forgot what I was talking about. Alright, this piece of trash video. Why do I even bother putting weeks of effort into my videos when a video like this with zero effort can score over a million views? Maybe I've been doing it all wrong. It's so obvious now. There is only one way to win in this market. Hello valued viewers, today I am going to warn you about the danger of watching videos over the internet. If you or loved one have ever watched a video over the internet, you and all of your friends will die of cancer. But you can be saved if you subscribe to this channel for more life-saving advice and, share this video with all of your friends. Thank you for your AdSense.